Peter Rose, Longwood Currency Trading. Advice for the beginning Forex trader. Look, if you trade in a small account, that's great. It means that you're interested in the Forex markets. Maybe you got a little bit of education or somebody told you about it <clears throat> and you thought you'd give it a try. You probably did a little trading in a simulated account uh, before you got into the live account. Or maybe you're still trading a simulated account. So my first piece of advice is quit trading the simulated account. You're wasting your time. If you're trading with less than $1,000, you're wasting your time. If you're not confident enough in your knowledge of the trading platform and of what the principles of Forex trading are all about, not how to trade, but the, what the principles of trading Forex are about, if you're not confident of those things, then that's why you're trading less than $1,000. Why is $1,000 so important? <clears throat> $1,000 is one mini lot, $1 a pip. If you trade less than $1 a pip, you're trading for 10 cents or 15 cents a pip or whatever. You're never going to learn anything. It, it's just you're going to confuse yourself. You're trading for cups of coffee. It's not real trading. I don't care what anybody says. It's an interesting exercise once you do learn how to trade to take a two or three or four hundred dollar account and run it up to a couple of thousand dollars. That's great fun. But you're not going to do that when you have a thirty or forty thousand dollar account. You're not going to you're not going to take that and run that up to two or three hundred thousand dollars or whatever that proportional difference is. It's just not going to happen because the trading is done differently. I mean, look, if you're uh, taking eight cent risks uh, on a trade, trading a, a you know three hundred dollar account, um, what's going to happen when your risk goes to eight hundred dollars? Now, what are you going to do? You haven't properly prepared for that because you haven't you haven't got the right emotional trading emotion foundation under you. Trade a simulated account with $1,000 to learn your trading platform and what all that crap means and how to place orders. <clears throat> In the interim, you should be studying some basic books on what the currency market is all about. Why are you trading? You're just not trading squiggles on a, on a graph. <clears throat> You're trading the economic differential between two countries doing commerce between them. And if you don't understand that, you don't understand order flow, you don't understand the principle of what the Forex market is all about, and how are you going to trade that? How would you trade real estate if you didn't understand what the real estate market is all about? How would you trade the orange market if you didn't understand the orange growing process? I mean, I, I, it's amazing that people will spend more time uh, picking out a pair of, of uh, running shoes than they will throw in $500 into the currency market and think they're going to turn that into $3,000 because some asshole out there told you that it is possible. <laughs> Trade with an amount that pays for your margin and gives you plenty of runway to make mistakes or to let the trade run. If you have a thousand dollar account and your margin is um, five hundred dollars, then because in the U.S. you have to put up five percent of the value of the currency. So if you're trading at one point two five four, you got to multiply that by point oh five uh, and get the margin amount. So some of the majors right now, for example, pound dollar is trading it. Um, you, need, you need about six, $6,500 to trade a full lot, $650 to trade one mini lot. So that's the reason for the $1,000. You need six fifty dollars just to put the margin up. Now, if you're in a country that doesn't require 5%, what are you going to do? Are you going to put down 1% and over leverage yourself? Oh, man. 
the U.S. has the guidelines that they have, the 5% rule, the FIFO trading rules, and all the other stuff to protect the trader as much as possible in order to make sure that you're, you're able to um, look at the market realistically for what you're trying to do instead of a gambling casino where you throw your, uh, you know, you throw your, your bet down on uh, hard 10 and let the dice go. Rules are not constrict you. Rules are there to protect you like a stop sign. So when you're grousing about what those rules are, why don't you look at why the rules were created? Because they're trying to prevent you from doing something stupid. Anybody who would suggest to you that you trade at 100 to 1 leverage, let alone 200 to 1 or 500 to 1, is absolutely singing you a death song. And if you're silly enough to listen to their rationalization arguments as to why trading at 100 to 1 or 500 to 1 is a good idea, then you are more gullible than you think and you probably ought to forget about currency trading. Why don't you go trade crypto? That's the real crazy shit out there. You can do anything in there. And it isn't even based on anything at all. It's just based on the greater fool theory. You're buy, you buy something hoping that someone will pay more for it and buy it away from you. That's all that the crypto market is. There's nothing solid behind it at this time in 2022. That could very well change. But if you get involved in that right now, doesn't make any difference whether it will change. You're gone. You're gone. 97% gone. There are a few people that get lucky and they make millions. Where do you think they make those millions from? <laughs> Where do you think the millions come from, boys and girls? It's tough enough in the currency market at 90% against you. There was a major brokerage study, over 43 million of their client transactions that found that 90% of traders lose 90% of their money in 90 days. That's pretty sad. But most of them are just cowboys that go out there thinking that they're going to take their $200 and turn it into $20,000. Really. If you look at the ads from two or three or four years ago about the Forex market, that's all you saw. And then people started to catch on. So then you get the jerks out there that are my FX lifestyle, you know, like driving around in the rolls and the, and the three million dollar uh, uh, house and uh, expensive watches, none of which he owns. They're all f rentals They're, and, and, and the money that he's flashing around is movie money. It's fake. He's just selling courses. Hey, he's probably not doing it anymore. You know, you can fool. Um, some of the people all the time, and all of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all the time. And so eventually these harebrainers fall apart, and you no longer see them pitching their stuff. But it's too late for the people that did listen to them. There seems to be a never-ending supply of people who don't want to listen to what's going on. That's the bad stuff. What's the good stuff? You're starting out. You have all the opportunity in the world to make a lot of money. You can make as much money from the currency markets as you can dream. You really can. You know, my goal right now in uh, transitioning uh, to a larger six-figure account than, than where I was and actually trading into those areas um, you know, I was trading three to six full lots uh, at the beginning of the year, transitioned to trading six to eight, and, but I had a six-figure bank that whole time. I'm just working my way through the same way you would if you were transitioning from driving a, a, just a regular car and you wanted to race, for example, an Indy, Indy 500. You wouldn't go and race an Indy 500 right away. You'd get a fast car 
and you'd race that around the roads and then you might you might you might get a racing car at a low end and and do the uh, uh, local races in other words you're working your way up and in fact you can't just jump into the Indy 500 you have to go through a bunch of qualifying races right and so why would you why would you do currency trading differently and just because I know how to do it there's no reason for me to go from saying oh I'm going to trade three full lots here and I'm really successful so now I'm going to go and uh, trade 15 full lots that would be suicide you think well it's only numbers it is only numbers except those numbers are controlled by your brain and you, your brain is does funny things to you and so <clears throat> the objective of trading is to make a lot of money but you're not going to learn or be able to make a lot of money unless you learn how to do this stuff in these graduated steps and the perfect place to start with that is where you're at with a thousand dollar account trading one mini lot when you trade one mini lot you're all in all out and that's a good thing because you only have two decisions per position to make when to go in and when to come out that's it if you're trading six full lots with a sixty thousand dollar account there's a lot more decisions to make what are you going to do? Are you going to go in with $60,000 and come out with 60000 No. You want to manage that money better. And so you stage into the position. You stage in with maybe two lots to start. If you lose, you only lose the value of two lots. If the price moves in your favor, you add two more. Moves a little bit more favor, you add two more. And you do that consistently. You make a lot of money. You're climbing your way up. You don't climb to the top of a mountain by taking big, big jumps. You walk and carefully work your way up. Because you know what? If you slip on the rocks or you lose your grip, you're dead. And that's true in the financial markets as well. If you get it wrong, you could go all the way down the hill. <clears throat> and I know of lots of people including myself when I started, that was making money and doing really well and working really hard over time to build that account up and made one mistake and gone. Because they're not teaching proper risk management out there. If you guys are looking at these videos or reading books and they're talking about risk to reward ratio, stupid talking about not risking more than a quarter of a percent of your bank or one percent of your bank or even two percent of your bank is well, what does that have to do with the market or the trading I don't know where these I don't know where these rules come from I'm some pencil pusher sitting down thinking about what a great way not to lose your money uh, would be but if you don't have any money to really lose what difference does it make I mean what are you going to do? Are you going to worry about only risking one, two percent, or three percent of a of a thousand dollar account? I mean, it's crazy. Some of this stuff is just crazy. You need to step back from the thing and 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 look at the currency market the same way that you looked at when you were looking at driving a car. I mean, even though you didn't know anything, you look at that car and you say, "Man, that's a big hunk of metal." And not only could I do a lot of damage with that, but I could get myself really seriously hurt if I don't really learn how to control this thing. Or even if you have a pet dog, you have to know what that animal is capable of doing and what they're not capable of understanding. You go scare that dog, he's going to bite you. <laughs> I just saw a video of some dumbasses at one of our national parks photographing the bison, right? A wild animal. Bison's a wild animal. It's a big animal. And they're way over near the retaining wall. It's just a, sh a, a short wall. The bison don't, aren't, aren't going to climb over the wall, you know. But these jerks go down to the wall, and they had little kids with them, and they're taking pictures of the bison and pissing the bison off. 
So, oh, look at the Bernie Bison. I'm taking the pictures and all that, walking up and down and aggravating him. And he jumps over the wall and charges the guy. He was going right for the guy's son. Fortunately, the guy picked up his son and turned into the bison. The bison hit him. He threw his son. And he got knocked down. He gets up. The bison charged him again. Down he goes. And he rolls. And he gets up again. The bison, bison's just standing there going, get the, get the hell out of my space. And all the people start backing off. Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to blame the bison? No. Your opportunity with that $1,000 account is to learn a skill that will pay you for the rest of your life. Would you rather do that or would you rather take that $1,000 and then turn it into $3,000 in eight weeks? Which choice would you have? Because you're not going to take... Uh, a $30,000 account and turn it into $3 million or $300,000 or $200,000 in the same amount of time it takes to take $1,000 into whatever you do, $3,000, $8,000. It isn't. It's because when you know what you're doing with that small account, you compound and you stage in micro lots and you build and you go like crazy and you're doing basically the same thing with the really larger bank rolls. But you don't learn how to do that by doing it with mini lots. Now, that would seem counterintuitive. And that's one of the things I think that most people don't understand about the currency markets is that you can't trade with normal intuition. Curtis Faith wrote a book, Trading from Your Gut. And he talks about gut and intuition and the differences. In fact, I did a video on that as well, talking about those thoughts. <clears throat> and, and at the heart of why you can't do with this little mini account what you can do with the larger account is, is not, if you... It's it's not in it's not intuitive the way that you trade the larger account, and that's not the point of the video today. The point of my stressing, if you're getting started, is to take that thousand dollar account, right, and go all in with it and come all out with it, because the primary thing that you're trying to establish is a good win to loss ratio. Because that will enable you to do the next most important metric, which is your average uh, profit value, your win, your win, some people call it a win rate. It's a win value averaged over your trades. So that, because if you have a 90% win to loss ratio, you win nine times and you lose once, you could still lose money. You could lose a lot of money. You make uh, $10 nine times and you lose $1,000 the next time. The win to loss ratio is the most important ratio that there is, but it isn't the only consideration that you can have. There's a there's a tremendous value in getting a good win to loss ratio even though it it might result in a negative result for you because then you've 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 filtered out at least one problem how do i get a good win to loss ratio and then you can say well if i have a good win to loss ratio why am i losing and let's this back away a little bit why am I why am I losing? And the answer to that question takes you to the next step. Well, how come I'm not winning as much as I should? And that takes you to the next step. How can I make more money? And so there's a series of learning that you go through that's gonna cost you money when you start. Now, if I work with somebody even from a dead stop, I try to take you through that 
that that process from a from a dead start uh, to trading a, a a live account and having a good win to loss ratio with a good average win value and another metric that I work with you on in three months is three months of your time too much to trade for a lifetime skill when you get trading for a while one of the most important things that everybody talks about is risk control the problem is most folks don't really understand what that means and few of them would be able to tell you what the key aspects of risk are in the currency markets because they're a little bit different because it's a zero-sum game which means if you lose somebody's gonna win and that person order everybody's order has to match up there's no <clears throat> there's no options on it there's no borrowing of stock certificates multiple times it, there's none of that you either win or you lose I think it was, Liz, was it Liz Chevelle I keep forgetting her name I'm sorry there's one of the one of the uh, turtle traders said you know at the end of the day you either win or lose case closed either know what you're doing or you don't now some days you will have lost money and that's okay because if you have a good win to loss ratio ratio you'll be able to make that up but those are the skills that you learn with that thousand dollar account if you have a five hundred dollar margin or say a six hundred dollar margin which it would be about right now <clears throat> for a pound dollar for example you've got four hundred dollars of margin at a dollar a pip so you'd have to lose four hundred pips before you got the idea oh uh, I'm doing something that's really stupid and fix that don't do it like I did and start in a, uh, doing all this analysis and running computer simulations and all this stuff based on a forty thousand dollar account get into a simulated account and trade the forty thousand dollars and make fifteen percent a month for nine and ten month straight periods and then losing a little bit and figuring oh okay I've got the answer to the thing and then taking and opening a forty thousand dollar live account <clears throat> and it was gone in about four months five months forty thousand dollars I had 5,000 left. And again, I've told this story over and over again. I had $5,000 left. I stepped back from the market and I looked at it objectively instead of what all these people are hawking on YouTube videos and, and manuals and courses and all the other crap. I don't know what they're doing. I do know what I'm doing. I've got a bachelor's degree in physics. I had 40, year, 40 years of ex experience as a real estate investor. As a software engineer for 33 years, I understand complexity. I understand money. I understand. Why did I lose $40,000? And it didn't take me long. I just stepped back from it, and I looked at it, and I go, really, is it that simple? I, 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 so I piddled around for a couple of weeks in, uh, in my account. Uh, I think I, I think I went back to the to the uh, simulated account just and I knew that wasn't going to do me any good but I just wanted to get my confidence back and and get back in the rhythm before I even risked the five thousand dollars anyway I, I went back into the market um, and I doubled that five thousand dollars in about four and a half months I think I was a couple hundred bucks short of doubling it and then I added ten thousand dollars more to the account and traded that and then I ended added twenty five thousand dollars more to the account and traded that and um, and I have a six figure account now not because I took a thousand dollar account and ran it to six figures because you don't do that or because I had ten thousand and ran it to forty thousand because you don't do that because there's too much risk you have to trade on principles you can't trade for money so the best advice that I could give you as you're starting out in your in your journey is to start with a thousand dollar mini account with a good trading plan with good 
goals. And when you don't hit those good goals, you ask yourself, why didn't it work this time? Why didn't it work this time? What am I doing wrong? What could, what could I have done just looking at it, not actually doing the trade? What, 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 what went wrong and what could, I, what could I have fixed? And I will guarantee you that if you're doing it with that small account, you'll be able to figure that out. If you're doing it with a large account, you won't be able to figure it out. And if you don't run into those problems, if you go in and you trade a ten or $20,000 account to start and you are plodding along and following all these guidelines about how not to lose your money, only risking 2% of your account, and you're slowly growing your account based on those principles, um, you're not going to you're not going to grow that account to be a, a a bigger account, and when you if you just end up with a whole bunch of money, and you drop that on the table and you start trading six figures all of a sudden you won't know what to do with it you won't know how to do it you won't know how to manage that money because you you, you came in under protective principles. You're not going to take a thousand dollar account and make that any any life any amount of life-changing money. But if you had a $30,000 account, which is just kind of a general amount that I kind of throw out there, because $30,000 is a pretty, pretty solid base income for most folks that are working out there. Yeah, yeah, I know, it's, uh, you know, it's like a $15 an hour job, um, which is, um, basic income right now in the United States. The minimum wage is about 15 bucks an hour. I mean, I can't imagine uh, that sitting at the uh, at the drive-up window at Dunkin' Donuts or something is worth 15 bucks an hour, $30,000 a year, because that would make my job that I retired at at you know, six figures, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands instead of a hundred thousand. <laughs> Depends on where in the country that you live. But if you're living in the heartland, thirty, forty thousand dollars is what you're squeaking on with. That's what you're making. So if you had a thirty thousand dollar account, well let me put it this way. If you were making thirty thousand dollars, you're barely able to pay your rent, let alone food and gas and a car insurance and all the rest of the stuff. It's really hard. So if you had a $30,000 job, if somebody said, I'll give you a $6,000 raise to come and work for me, and you work for $36,000, would you do that? You bet your ass in a heartbeat you'd do that. Do you realize that $6,000 on a $30,000 account is 20%? 20% on your money a year. Some people can make 20% a month on their account. In the month of June, I made 19% on a six-figure account. I actually made a little bit more. I made, uh, well, I made $30,000 in the month of in the month of June. Thirty thousand. On a big account. But if you had thirty thousand and you could make just twenty percent a year on that thirty thousand. Basically what I did in a month. You'd be doing okay. You'd be doing great. But instead, everybody wants to take their, their account and double it in four months because some jerk on the, on the web says, oh, I took a $5,000 account and double it in four and a half months. And you, and you say, well, I'll take a $5,000 account and I'll double it in, in five months and then I'll take the $10,000 and I'll double that in another five months and I'll take that $20,000 and I'll double that. It isn't going to happen. I mean, if, if you seriously think that you're going to be able to do that, um, 
don't subscribe to my channel, don't listen to anything more that I'm going to say, because you're just going to argue with me, and, and it's not going to do any good, because I'm making the money and you're not, okay? I'm just telling you, save yourself a lot of grief. Those of you that are at that four-figure account or low, low five-figure account level, you have all the opportunity in the world. Do not blow it. Learn this stuff the right way. Be very careful about what you learn and how you apply what you learn to that small account so that you allow yourself to make mistakes so that you can learn. And smile because you are laying the groundwork for a skill that will pay you for the rest of your life. Peter Rose, Longwood Currency Trading. Have a great day and have a great trading day.